Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining our webinar today. We're just going to hold for about 10 to 20 seconds to let everybody join up. How's it going, Ed? I'm good. How are you today? I'm doing good. Enjoying the weather, which yeah. is rare that it's beautiful in Vancouver. Although I shouldn't say that. Lately, it's been pretty good. Yeah, it has been. Okay. A few more seconds. Okay. It looks like we have a pretty good group now. So let's get started. So a couple quick notes to start. We'll, we'll be sending you a copy of the presentation and the webinar recording after this meeting. Uh, and secondly, if there's any questions which show up for you, please drop them into the chat directly. You can send them directly to me at Wong, or you can send them to everyone and we'll address them at the end of the webinar presentation. Okay, so let's get started on the uh, agenda. The agenda today is really designed to support you in understanding why crowdsourcing should matter in your world and how to you leverage it to create value in your business or brand. So specifically, we'll start with one, why should I care about crowdsourcing? Then we'll get into the future of business. Third, we'll talk a little bit about HeroX. And then fourth, we'll finish with questions and answers. So I'd like to introduce you to our presenter today. Her name is Cal Sahoda, who's our VP of Possibilities. She has 25 years experience in business and financial services with four years. I think that's almost five years now, if I'm correct, Cal. With actually, it's just over four, actually. Oh, it's just over four. You got in it. Innovation space. Um, she's held positions as an executive, sales coach, financial advisor, and a client relationship manager. And Cal and their team have worked on with dozens of incentive-based companies competitions responsible for awarding over $10 million in prizes to innovators globally. And some of the clients that she's worked with is XPRIZE, NASA, Lockheed Martin, Coca-Cola, and the NFL. And uh, really awesome is Cal recently received the Tech Visionary Award by Intercom. So congratulations on that again, Cal. That's awesome. Thanks, Ed. Great. So I would like to pass that over to you now. and. Perfect. Thanks, Ed. Excited to be participating in our webinar today. So um, let's jump right into it. The all important question is how this is going to create value for you. Well, let's first start by understanding the shifts in business and more specifically, keeping up with change is critical in ensuring the success and the resilience of your company and your brand. The very foundation of how we conduct business is oftentimes moving and shifting beneath us, sometimes every single day. The pace of innovation is getting more and more challenging to keep up with. It's when you get complacent or resistant to that change, that's when you tend to run the risk of potentially losing your brand or your business. That's the value for you today. Supporting you in understanding how you can simply, easily, and cost-effectively implement an innovation strategy. This is one of my favorite quotes by Einstein. We can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. By embracing the idea that you really don't know where your solutions live, you unlock creativity, which is otherwise oftentimes limited in traditional business. How that occurs for me is this. Finding someone that looks at your problem from a slightly different perspective without the curse of knowledge can oftentimes drive exponential ideas and results. So let's build on that a little bit. Let's look at what business is actually looking for. The stats that you see here, based on a survey from back in 2017, conducted by PwC, when it comes to talent and the future, where does crowdsourcing fit? We believe crowdsourcing will become a mainstream tool for companies leveraging talent. The main pain point we see is innovation. In the executive offices of nearly every organization, there's a universal fear. Things are moving faster than ever and keeping up is more and more challenging. The rate of market innovation is moving faster than the organizations can innovate and CEOs are really feeling that pain. And we get that sense when we speak to them on a regular basis. 
great slide. So you can see here how you have your core team. You then have your freelancers or those we can consider to be on contract even. Then on the far right, you have software, AI, machine learning, robotics, etc. But you see the section of crowd. It's here that we believe the solutions to the pain point organizations feel today as it relates to innovation can be solved. So if you recall from the previous slide, I talked about the CEO's pain points. Innovation is moving faster than organizations can innovate and billions of dollars are poured into startups to actually exploit that reality. Yet the internet provides an abundant resource. Clay Shakey, author of Cognitive Surplus, estimates that the world's educated population has a trillion hours a year of extra time. I really want you guys to just stop for a second and be present to that. A trillion hours a year. So clearly the answer is to go outside of the organization, but no easy way has really existed, not until platforms were developed to solve that pain of how you actually scale innovation. A key and necessary component of an innovation strategy is crowd. So is crowdsourcing really the future? No, it's actually already here. When you look at the crowdsourcing landscape here, it's growing exponentially year over year. This slide's actually a few years old already. So this is not something that you can look past or ignore and say, hey, you know what, this isn't for me. This is something that you have to very intentionally and critically look at and ensure that you incorporate it within your, within your innovation strategy. So let's take a bit of a step back. It's good to cover the simplicity of crowdsourcing. So let's do a really quick walkthrough of how it actually works. It starts with an organization identifying a business issue, a problem, or I mean, it doesn't even have to be a problem. It can be an opportunity. They broadcast that as an open call to the crowd and invite them to submit their ideas. It's done in a very brand friendly, very risk friendly way. We oftentimes refer to it as hosting a challenge. The crowd submits their solutions, the organization vets the solutions, and then the organization quite simply selects and awards the solution or solutions which best meet their needs. Pretty simple and straightforward. The other amazing part of this is, if you take a look to the right, is that this is repeatable and that's super critical in creating efficiencies in any business environment. And to those of you who are listening today, who are either team leads or executives, you will fully appreciate that. And you can see some of the key takeaways listed there on the right of which we'll dig a little bit deeper into some of those in the coming slides. Crowdsourcing is really everywhere if you take a really close look. So 15 years ago, the Ansari X Prize was a challenge which uncovered technology to allow for private space travel. Now, some of you may or may not have made the connection, so let me tie that in for you. This new technology was eventually purchased by Richard Branson. That's where Virgin Galactic came from. Deloitte's been bringing it into their consulting services for years. Here's a, here's a snapshot of a white paper, actually, they wrote a couple of years back. Lego, a, a toy manufacturer, if you'll believe it. So Lego has been sourcing crowd for new ideas for Lego sets, but not only that, they not only source the design, but they then crowdsource the actual designers who then build the new sets. So they're designing on both ends and they're crowdsourcing on both ends. This is another great and very public example of crowdsourcing. Most everyone is familiar with Elon Musk, I'm sure. He likes the idea of Hyperloop, which is a new form of transportation, disruptive innovation, if you will. He's crowdsourcing his entire startup. When you take a look at our site, the big takeaway you'll see is the diversity in prizes, sponsors, challenge areas, from government organizations such as NASA, to entrepreneurs, to foundations, to mining companies. I mean, there's really no limit other than that we ask that it be legal, socially responsible, and ethical. I really encourage you to go to the site. If you go onto the main page, you go to scroll near to the bottom there, you can get a sense of you click on the challenges off the main menu and you'll be amazed and hopefully a bit inspired by all the different types of challenges that you'll see there. But for our time today, I'm gonna to take you through three very distinct examples. I love to share this one so you can get a sense that you can really crowdsource for anything. So NASA set out to crowdsource a complete system inside a spacesuit that collects human waste for up to 144 hours without the use of hands. 
yes, I mean, this was actually a challenge that we ran for NASA. In fact, it was one of the most successful challenges ever run in history as it relates to the number of submissions that were given. Over 20,000 registered to compete. The challenge went viral and it was picked up by a number of news agencies. Needless to say, it was a hugely successful challenge. The oil cleanup challenge. This prize was actually awarded back in 2011, so it's a few years old now, but the results and some of the facts surrounding the challenge really resonated with me when I was first introduced into this space. So many of you are familiar with the BP oil spill of a number of years back in the Gulf of Mexico. What you may or may not be aware of is the actual efforts to clean up the oil by the then wife of the Google chairman, Wendy Schmidt. She's an activist, philanthropist in the space. So she went to you know, scientists and subject matter experts asking the question, how quickly can we clean up the oil? And they all came back to her and said, look, Wendy, the best you're gonna get is 1100 gallons per minute. The technology is about 20 years old, but that's the best you're gonna get. That didn't work for her. So she went and launched a challenge for $1.4 million. The challenge that she took to the crowd was more than double the gallons per minute. So she wanted it to be 2,500 gallons per minute and she wanted the oil recovery efficiency to be over 70% oil to water collective. You can see some of the powerful results there on the right. A community of 250 teams competed globally. The end result, 400% increase over the industry's best, bringing it to 4,670 and the efficiency was close to 90% powerful results. But here's the thing. The best part of the story actually isn't just the results, is that the, one of the top 10 competitors was a tattoo parlor owner out of Vegas. You literally have no idea where your solutions live and who has them. There is no conceivable way that he would have ever been referenced for his ideas in a traditional business environment. But yet, when you look at what he was able to contribute through the process of crowdsourcing, it's powerful. Third example, one of my personal favorites, likely because it relates to beer. Most of, most of you are familiar with the beer maker Anheuser-Busch. They were looking to identify a new ergonomic way to open a bottle that's simple, easy, appealing to consumers, so beer lovers can get into all the fun stuff easier. It was a simple $5,000 challenge. They were blown away by the results. 71 amazing ideas were submitted from all over the globe. The results were far more incredible than they had imagined. And as you can see there, their innovators were actually um, came from 29 different countries. And in, in our debrief with them, it was that specific point that they were extremely impressed at. The winning submission actually came from an architect from Honolulu. How cool was that? You never know where your best and most creative ideas live. So what do we do? HeroX enables any organization to solve any challenge in any field using the power of the crowd. And I'm gonna take you back to one of our earlier slides where we emphasized how crowd is key and critical as a critical element in any innovation strategy. So with our simple to use challenge platform an organization posts an open call to the crowd as I described in an earlier slide on how crowdsourcing works. From there, the crowd self-selects their participation and at times we refer to them as solvers or innovators. The interesting thing is they draw motivation from the reward, obviously money matters, but also from the joy of participating in something that they find interesting, fun, and perhaps something that they're passionate about. In fact, a Harvard innovation study shows that money comes in third as a motivating factor for innovators, closely tied to the fourth, which is actually having fun. We have proven our challenge model on a wide scale from small to large dollar values across a wide range of industries. So here's some of the traction that we've seen at HeroX so far. I'm certainly not going to go into every single fact, but you can see that we've seen some uh, incredible traction, focusing specifically on the crowd component. We have over 123,000 solvers active on our site. And in addition to that, you also have access to our partner solver community, which is well over 2 million. And that's a conservative estimate. And that number is actually not reflected on this slide. Also, you can see near the bottom there all the different brands that we've worked with. 
And again, it's only just to create a sense of understanding and diversity on, you know, the various platforms and organizations, the various ways that our platform is being utilized by these brands. Having that global presence is critical if you're truly wanting to source the crowd. And many platforms, companies, and organizations claim that they're global, but as you can see from this slide, we are truly global. Each pin represents a location, not just an innovator. Each location may have hundreds of innovators behind it. We have over 175 countries represented on the platform. Very powerful. So HeroX is fundamentally different from other crowdsourcing platforms. It's the only place that you can build, grow, and curate your very own crowd. A crowd that remains with you and continues to grow. Rather than building a crowd and monetizing access to it, HeroX is the whole crowd platform, providing easy access to the crowd, not behind a paywall. So HeroX is positioned as a social network for innovation. And what that means is this, if you think back to the social networks that you're most familiar with, the Facebooks and the LinkedIn's of the world, you have a home page or a main page on HeroX. Every challenge you host lives on your HeroX brand page, which you can customize however you want your brand to be represented in the marketplace. And just like Facebook and LinkedIn, you build, grow, and, cum and communicate with your very own community right off of your personal brand page. A community that you have access to and you have the ability to tap into again and again. In fact, the more you crowdsource, the larger your community is going to get. Just like when you probably first started LinkedIn, you probably start off with a handful of connections. Now you're probably well past a few hundred, if not over a thousand. Another key distinction is we are no longer have any would-be competitors. Our would-be competitors are now our powerful partners. And here's why. We have nothing about whether you use our platform or another platform for the back end. So long as your challenge appears on the HeroX social network, you can continue to build your crowd. And we should have a bit of time actually in the next slide. And I'm going to just take it out of the conceptual and give you guys a, a real screen share live off of our site. So let's dig into this distinction just a little bit more. So existing crowdsourcing platforms have followed a supply side model. For example, recruiting a specific skill set like coding or graphic design, etc. And then offering that crowd to organizations seeking those solutions. This model is based on a widely believed premise that supply creates demand. And this approach limits the platform's addressable market to only problems that their existing crowd can solve. HeroX is based on a demand side model that we call Crowd 2.0. We've discovered that demand creates supply. So HeroX is cost-effectively recruiting solvers on demand. So quite simply, HeroX acts as the everything crowdsourcing marketplace, just like Amazon is the everything store. In other words, if you're buying online, the easy way isn't to shop for you know, something on individual sites on these individual product providers. The easy way is to go to Amazon and find everything that you're looking for simply and easily. It's all there. So how do you get started? It starts with a simple shift. Look at your business, see what you're up to, where are you stuck? Where do you see opportunities for future growth? Where do, you, where do you see the need for innovation? I've listed just some really basic examples there. Maybe you're looking for a new technology. Maybe you want to quite simply redesign your website. The ideas for what you may want to crowdsource are as vast as the problems in business themselves. The idea you know, that can be to source a solution to the broad crowd, or you can take a more conservative and risk mitigated approach by starting with an internal challenge by sourcing ideas from within your team. Particularly if you have a larger, perhaps global team, this works extremely well. A couple of internal challenges that we've um, run extremely successfully, which come to mind, is NBC and Emeritas most recently. You know, if you're unsure, email me directly. I'm happy to walk you through and, uh, and you know, answer any follow-up questions that you have. If you have initial thoughts or ideas on what you may want to actually crowdsource, you know, send them over to me and we can further clarify it and discuss it.
That concludes our presentation for today. Um, thanks so very much for taking the time and I appreciate your attention. Ed, over to you. Let's see if we can take some questions. Great, thanks, Cal. I'm pulling up questions now. Um, oh, we get this all the time, Cal. Uh, what about IP or intellectual property? Yeah, that's a really great question. So with intellectual property, it's a very common question. Every challenge has its own challenge specific agreement where you have the opportunity to elect and customize different types of um, intellectual property. So there's four standard templates that we make available to you. Either the innovator keeps the intellectual property or the sponsor keeps it. You can do it open source or you could have it shared. We also find that some of our larger brands tend to customize their own. That's perfectly fine as well. The, the platform allows uh, for a good level of customization. So templates are there. If you want to customize your own, you can do it as well. But the challenge specific agreements really allow you to customize, you know, what it is that you want to get into agreement with the innovator for upfront. Awesome. Thanks, Cal. Uh, second question. Um, I have an idea, but no plan of what to do next. Um, share with my company to get buy-in or budget. Do you have information that I can download to help me? Yeah, absolutely. You know, another really common question that we get, you know, oftentimes we have individuals that join the webinars and um, they get socialized to the idea of it and they're blown away by it, but then they're like, okay, how am I going to now take this back to my team? So we absolutely have resources that we can share with you to support you in socializing, both crowdsourcing as well as, you know, how um, HeroX plays a role in crowdsourcing. I would say for immediate next steps, honestly, I would encourage you to just send me a really quick email. I'll share those resources with you that we have on hand. We've also conducted educational workshops customized to the team. We can see if that's an option that might make sense to you. So yes, the resources are there. Reach out to me. I'm more than pleased to, to share them with you. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, here's another one. What, what do you mean by social network? Gotcha. Yeah, another really common question. So what I'm gonna do is, um, my intention was to do a quick share on this website. So that is a perfect opportunity for me to do that. So you have the site and I've, I've just clicked on just one of our, uh, one of our clients, it's probably one of our busier clients, which is NASA. This is their homepage on HeroX. So this is their brand page. And I mean, they customized it pretty simply. They just, you can see, they just put a couple of lines in there. Here you can see that all of the challenges that they have are listed here specifically on their brand page. There's an opportunity for them here to communicate with their crowd. So it's called the forum. So if they want to message their crowd, they can absolutely do that or the crowd can message in. There's an activity feed here, again, very much like a social network. And then also if you want to update your community, right? Your entire community lives on this page. So you can, you know, it works very much like a blog, blog post. You can drop in updates on a regular basis. And here's the social network element of it. Here's where your crowd lives. So when you go to your LinkedIn homepage, you know that you're, you know, you have X number of connections. So NASA has over 28,000 registered users. That's a part of their community. And you can see them all here. None of them are behind a paywall. So here, and the other key element of this is, and we talked about this a little bit already, is whether you use the HeroX backend or whether you use a different platform, we have nothing about it. You know, you may want to run a challenge that's really specific to coding. So if you want to use Top Coder, that's perfectly fine. And here is, here's an example, actually. The Veterans Online Memorial Challenge was a challenge that was hosted by NASA, but it was actually hosted on the backend with Top Coder. But you can see that it appears here on the HeroX page, you can see that the card is there, but when you actually click, it takes you through to Top Coder's backend. So, you know, as a social network, you can, you know, just like when you do a Facebook share, you can click on it, but it can click through to YouTube or anywhere else. It works very much the same way. But one of the biggest value adds here is that, you know, you're able to keep, grow and build and curate your very own crowd. And you can tap into them again and again and again. And, you know, um, NASA has actually been crowdsourcing, believe it or not, for well over a decade. And it's a government organization that's typically quite conservative. 
But these guys have been leaning in for over 10 years, and I expect that their crowd's going to continue to grow. Great. I don't know. Does that, does that answer the question, Ed? I think so. I think it answers yeah. a lot of questions, actually. Um, uh, so let me just go through one more. Uh, how long does it take to create a challenge, and how long should it run for? Yeah, really, really good question. So, you know, it, there's no simple answer to that, Ed. I mean, it really, it's really going to depend um, as it relates to creating it. There's a couple of variables to consider, how much time that you have to dedicate to it and how complex your concept is. I mean, if you have most of the details captured and it's mostly a copy and paste function into the platform with some additional effort, you can probably get that done within a couple of days. But if it's something that's a little bit more complicated that you need to do a bit more research on it, that might take you seven to 10 days. It really just depends. But again, you know, you can reach out and you can, you know, speak to me very specifically on what that challenge looks like. And, you know, we can certainly guide you on the best way to actually approach it. Um, the other thing, the other part of the question I think you asked was, how long do you run it for? So um, that's the duration of the challenge. So on average, we find that for simple challenges, what we'd like to refer to as an ideation challenge or give us your best idea, I'm trying to get away from acronyms, but try to give your best idea, their ideation challenge is how we refer to them, usually anywhere from three to four months. That's usually on average how long they get run for. But then you have those challenges that are phased challenges. So, you know, you might have a phase one where you give me your best idea and phase two then might be, okay, I'm going to down select and I want you guys to now go create me a prototype. So those challenges can run anywhere from nine months to a year to two years, like the Boeing challenge is over two years in length. So there's a, there's a lot there that, um, there's a lot of variables there that's really gonna dictate how long you run it for and how long it takes to actually get it up and running. Awesome, thanks Cal. Mm -hmm. um, that's it for questions. So just wanted to repeat again, thank you everybody for attending today's webinar. We will be emailing you all a copy of the presentation and a copy of the recording. So if you wanted to socialize that internally with your organization, you can. Um, if you would like to reach out to myself or Cal, our emails are quite easy, cal at herox.com or ed at herox.com. And besides that, once again, thank you for attending our meeting and have a wonderful day. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, everyone.